On today's show, a German robotics company unveiled two new insect bots, and we're going to tell you all about them. This product may seem like an April Fool's joke, but remember, this is April 2nd, so let's... I'll tell you more about it in a sec. Very true. And we have a really cool look at an ARC pen, which is helping Parkinson's patients use their hands to write letters and stuff, which is pretty awesome. All right, guys, it's April 2nd. April Fool's Day is out of the way. It's tomorrow daily. <laughs> Greetings, citizens of the internet. Welcome to Tomorrow Daily, the best geek talk show in the known universe. I'm your host, Ashley Scala. Joining me as always, Kale Anonymous. Well, you survived April Fool's Day. I did. You know, I'm glad we didn't do anything. And you survived Cupcake Palooza for your birthday. I did. There was a it's Cupcake like Apocalypse. Time of your li this is the hardest time of your life, so I'm glad you could make it here It today. was. Yesterday um, was an extremely difficult day. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks, thanks, April Fool's Day. But now Thank everything's you. back to normal. Presumably. That's all presumably back to normal. So we've got some good stories. In the, in the blogosphere. Real actual stories. Yeah, real, honest stories. Well, we had real, so. honest stories yesterday. Everyone else did not. So, uh, okay, guys, let's uh, let's hit the headlines. All right, so I'm gonna tell you about these insect bugs. What okay. are you doing? You're like, you're. Do were you looking at the insect bugs? Do we have some? No. Oh, I know, I know. Um, so this is from German robotics company Festo. You're gonna freak out when you see these videos. Not they're, good. they're gonna weird you out actually a lot. All right. Uh, there were they unveiled these two new insect robots like either early this no! week. Or <laughs> I know, they're so creepy looking. Um, but they're also kind of stylish in their own way. So anyway, uh, th those are bionic ants. And the bionic ants are inspired by nature, as you're seeing on the screen right so now. So these are, these are the real ants? Those are real ants. Okay. Um, but uh, that, is the, that is the robot ant. And they are inspired by swarm intelligence, just like regular ants. And they communicate with each other and coordinate their movement based on the others. So they can actually kind of talk to each other, which is pretty cool. Um, they're all individually autonomous, but they all have a common objective to work towards. So they um, they talk to each other to sort of figure out exactly what they each need to do and all that stuff. Uh, there's a radio module on their abdomens that uh, lets each robot ant talk to the other. Uh, and then they can kind of figure out each individually like what they need to do to accomplish this task. They say, oh, like, well, you're doing this, so I should go over to this side of this thing and push this, you know, things like that. So um, pretty awesome. Yeah. And uh, I like I just love the concept of these sort of swarm I like swar the idea of swarm robots. I think they're really fun. Uh, and they all have, yeah, independent charging. They like walk up and put their antenna on. That's how they charge. Um, and I think they, they, don't, they don't last for very long. I want to say it's like uh, maybe like a couple hours. Like they like moving around, but. Um, okay, so uh, why did they make this nightmare fuel? Well, so the second bug, I'll explain a little bit like once we take a look at the second one because it's a little bit different. So we went from the ground so to the sky. Okay. And these are the e-motion butterflies. Now they look kind of small, Aww. but they're 50 centimeters wingspan, so they're pretty big actually. They're okay. kind of larger, um, and also uh, obviously beautiful. inspired by real life butterflies. Okay, so like those you're are seeing. real butterflies. Those are real on the screen right now, and then those are fake. So you can see they're they're quite a bit bigger than normal sized butterflies. Right. Uh, but the cool thing about these is again they use collective behavior. So um, they all have individually controlled wings and uh, different types of it's really weird to watch them fly wow out. super pretty um they're they're so stylish looking right so they're huge and they each have uh so they fly these butterflies in a in a confined space or in an area where they're able to put up these infrared cameras and then each one of these butterflies has uh an infrared sensor on it so that the uh, cameras can pick up exactly where they are in the room spatially send that data to a master computer and then the computer tells all of the butterflies where to fly so that they don't bump into each other, which is pretty awesome. So you have to set up a lot of stuff to make these guys fly around. Yeah, right? these ones it's not to, just like you fly. You them just let them go, field. like a box of doves. Yeah, like you so can't it's like you have to mount that. cameras so they don't hit each other. Is so they don't hit saying? each other. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So they, this is sort of a, a more experimental kind of coordinating uh, behavioral flight uh, kind of thing. So. Um, Unfortunately, we will not be able to purchase any of these as consumers. These are not like things that they're working on to bring to market. They're actually making these in the hopes that they will uh, continue to sort of fuel the autonomous robot robotics development that they have going on at Festo. So it's these are sort of like um, 
like promotional robots to be like, hey, here's some of the stuff we're working on. Look at how cool this is. These are all work. These robots, even though they're insects, like they make them more interesting to look at because they have a shape or a form that we're familiar with. They say, right. look at the cool things we're doing with autonomous robots doing a collective task together. So this is just kind created for inspiration. Yeah, future. It's not like they're like, oh, well, we're going to have ants rescue people. No, or butterflies, no. you know, butterflies. help the elderly. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, know. it won't be any of that. It won't okay. be any of that. They, all right, that's they, cool. They I like have the a, butterflies. It's all part of their like bionic learning network. So they have like a whole thing where they like unveil these robots and stuff. They also had like a gripper that was based on like a chameleon's tongue. It was really weird. But those two, the insect bugs, I thought were the most interesting. Hey, as long as they don't make spider things, I'm totally okay with that. Exactly. So well done. Uh, now to the second story. I'm not like the best businessman or am I any sort of businessman at all? <laughs> That's but if I show. was a company, I would not launch something on March 31st the day before April Fool's Day, you know, I don't know, because I don't want people to think it's fake, especially if it seems fake. I was gonna say, but you want Amazon, to something weird. Yeah, but Amazon decided, eh, whatever, let's just do it. We're Why Amazon. Not? And they decided to, to launch Amazon Dash. Now, Amazon Dash, it takes your so one step ordering to, to infinity and beyond. Basically, yeah. it is a little tiny device that you, you just set to your account and you hit the button whenever you, so like if it's a dishwasher detergent, you put it on your washing machine, oh no, I'm out of detergent. Boom, Click. you hit the dash and it orders more detergent for you. Right through your instantly. Amazon account, wow. Yeah, so it's it's one step touch if you needed budget. it that quickly. I, I guess I guess there's a need for that. I don't I don't really know. Um, so some of the stuff, uh, there's about 18 buttons available. Um, okay. Some of the ones that we saw them for was Bounty. I run in paper towels all the time. Yeah, well, we Maxwell all do. Maxwell House, so coffee, Smart coffee. Water, Olay, Gerber, Glad, Tide, and there's more in the video. But again, it's one touch, and if you accidentally press, like if you have a kid that's just like tie, 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 you could be like, you could cancel it on your smartphone within a little small amount of time. Or if you live with Kale, who literally can't help himself and just presses every button he sees. Yeah, I like it. So there you go. That is that's fast ordering made easily. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't know. What do you, what do you it's, think about it's that? It's one-click ordering right now without a computer, which you, is crazy. If you want it right now, uh, again, it is real. Yeah, you can how do go I get to it? Amazon Prime, and they have a thing where you can just like, if you have Amazon Prime, you can just click that. And they're giving some away for free right now. I guess like oh. a demo run. Amazon likes to do that kind of hmm. thing. So you can go. They'll only send three Macs to each home. So I mean, it's kind of a gamble to yeah. try it out. I already did it. I already like you're was like, like you're in. Good luck. Let's see. I think I may go. I may go Brita water filters. They're saying that they'll have one that if you put it on your Brita water, water filter, it'll tell you when the Brita water filter is yeah. like going bad. And mine, I you drink so much water that it's it's gonna go bad all the time. This is which a, is bad because they're gonna like they're gonna really cut it close. Part of this program is like letting manufacturers in on this like one click sort of process or automated ordering process. So you might not be able to get that right away, but mm -hmm. what they're saying is like they're letting developers into the back end of that like whole process so that they can integrate the technology into stuff like these Brita filters where it's like, oh, your Brita filter's bad. Oh, you automatically ordered another one. It's coming in the mail. Like you would, you just get an email on your phone saying- Internet of things. Yeah, it's all internet of things, everybody. Yeah. So weird. This um, is too much. It's a little weird, but I could see uh, the coffee thing, or I could see a lot of these being really useful in an office environment. Mm -hmm. Like, it, like coffee's out. Oh, we just click the button and it comes to the oh, office, office the next day. Or paper towels, people. or Tide, or whatever. There's always that one guy that would hit the. Well, then you just have the, time. you know, the person in the account like says, "Oh no, no, this is like 18 people have ordered coffee today." Like, you know? <laughs> or I wish there was some kind of notification that was like, "This was the last time you ordered from this button." Like, I wish there was a tiny. Just LEDs for they had the last date of last order, so that way if it's at an office, not every person going to the coffee machine realizing that the coffee's yeah. gone is like, oh, we gotta order more coffee. And it's like then you have 18 buckets I'm of coffee. I'm very curious to see how how useful this actually is. Yes. So I mean, I only buy Tide what once every two months, so one quick button may not be necessary. We'll see. Yeah. Amazon's trying to break new grounds. I totally get that. It's not an weird. April Fool's joke. If you want to try it out, Amazon Dash, go sign yeah. up for it now while they're still doing it for free. So yeah. there you go, Amazon Dash. That's our hashtag of the day, too. What is? TD Dash. Oh. So I want to know, are you guys gonna, is anybody actually interested in using this, one? And two, what's the what's the button that you need? Well, like, duh. What's the what you, pizza button, of course. Yes, You're but like, they have duh. that on the phone. 
Well, I know, but I mean, like, like emergency. no, I was going to say, like, you just have, like, with you all the time. It's like, you need it on a keychain where you yeah. just press a button and then pizza comes within a half yeah. hour. I run out of really unorthodox stuff, like lemon juice. I run out of lemon juice a lot. Sriracha. I run out of sriracha all the time. Oh, sriracha button. Okay, that's good. good. Yeah. I would say, But a guy me, in a chili pepper would have to show up and deliver it. Like, that's what's missing dressed here. Dressed up as that's a sriracha That's what's missing bottle. here, is it's not just a delivery <laughs> thing. There's, like, a step up. Like, if this was one touch button and a drone came and delivered it. If they started Debbie. combining all their stuff. See, I was going to say it would have to be for me integrated with Amazon now, which brings it like within an hour. Yeah. That's like if, See, if I could be like, oh, gosh, I'm out of coffee. I need this. I need my fix within an hour because otherwise I'm yeah. just going to get in my car, go to the store because I'm desperate for coffee right. and I'm just going to go get some coffee. Or honey, can you pick up paper towels? You know, On your way home. Yeah, right exactly. It's so just, what's your one thing? I would say for me, it would probably be, oh, that's tough. Um... You came with a question. Oh, I know. I Like I said, I never actually think about the answer to these questions before we sit in these chairs and I ask it to Kale. Uh, yeah. uh, I would probably say, you know, I really, I really, I would say creamer. Like that's, we run out of creamer all the time for our Ooh, coffee. Yeah, right. And I just, that would be the thing I would need like right away. Because I can't, can't have coffee without creamer. It seems like such a boring, like... Like device, you it know is. What I mean? It's like, important, but also I, I, I be haven't, really handy. I haven't really needed this yet, but that's what I'm saying is but this maybe could you be do. the device where you get it and you're like, I can't live without this. Yeah. Because I remember when I got my smartphone, I was like, Why do I this need a dumb. smartphone? What? I can just go to the internet, and now it's like, if I'm going out without it for, but this is, we'll see. If, so tell us if you guys think you want this. What's it? What is it? TD, yeah, TD dash? dash. TD Dash. That's it. It's all so, this. Easy. Yeah, let's see. I want to find I'm out. I'm so curious to and see if people want thing? this. And then what's the button that you would need to use it all the time? Okay, cool, cool. So um, right. I'd love a programmable button where you say, if I press this button, see? I get this thing. But they, but sense. it's all partnerships with all these businesses. How many did they say it was? It was like 30, 18. It's 18 of them 18 at first. And I'm sure okay. they'll have more. Diapers would be another one. If That's I a big one if you're a new baby. parent, if you okay. have a baby. Um, all, right. all right, let's talk about the Parkinson's pen. This is cool. This is called the Arc Pen. Uh, this is from a British design firm called Dopa Solution. And they made this pen, and it's, it looks a little different than a standard pen. It's it's pretty wide, and it has sort of a um, almost like a triangular shape to it. But uh, the thing with Parkinson's is people who suffer from that disease, um, a lot of times they have this additional disorder that is specific to their handwriting called micrographia. And it means their writing gets smaller as their hand cramps up more, and it just it gets tinier and more cramped as they write because it's really tough for them to grip a pen for an extended period of time, especially because a lot of times pens are really thin and it, they're very difficult to hold on to when you have Parkinson's. So they may, uh, Dopa Solution made this pen, the Arc Pen, that uses high frequency vibration to stimulate muscles in the hand for Parkinson's patients. Uh, and it lets those users write larger and clearer characters for extended amounts of time, which is pretty great. So you can see the before and after, like it's a pretty pretty good difference. And like the video is saying right now, 86% of the participants um, to, uh, improved. There were four, only 14. Wow. It was a very small group of people who tested it, but 86% um, marked improvement. They, they saw improvement in 86%. So um, I thought that was pretty cool. They, uh, Very cool. They're still in testing. Yeah. Um, they want to improve it. Obviously, it has inductive charging, which I thought was really cool. It has like a docking station. Um, they want to, this is the part I thought was awesome. So they want to expand this type of technology, this high frequency vibration for Parkinson's patients to write into other handheld tools. So for example, makeup brushes and um, artist brushes, like different things like that, where you would hold on a computer mice. That was another thing that they mentioned. Oh, that'd be where great, yeah. It's, where it makes it easier for somebody suffering from Parkinson's to be able to sort of do these things on their own as opposed to having someone else do it for them or not doing it at all. So maybe somebody was an artist, they get Parkinson's, then they say, well, I can't hold a paintbrush anymore. This is terrible, I can't do it. Well, now hopefully they would be able to give that back to them and say, well, no, no, you can. You can go back and do this if you use these brushes or whatever. So um, I thought that was a really cool uh, invention, really neat. I love that you know companies are working towards things like this because you know it doesn't affect a large portion of the population, but it is an important part of the population who needs our help. And so I thought that was pretty amazing. Yeah, I like th I like that it doesn't just stop at the pen. That they're like continuously got, going they want to solve all yeah. of the problems that these people face and and uh you know they definitely deserve it They're yeah they've got some real difficult i really like that they have these like sort of really broad plans for it and i, I thought that was so cool so great job dopa nice work
Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. We have a round of into it because it's Thursday and we're going to tell you what's draining our wallets. And then we have our a TD Fooled user feedback. We're going to talk about all the crazy April Fools gags that were going around the internet yesterday. And of course, uh, our phone time for the day. So don't click away. It's tomorrow daily. everybody you are so pumped right now about your into it that we should just go right we should just go right to the segment this is into it i don't even want to waste time i'm not into that segue but what i, I am what i'm into this time is a furious seven uh it came out it didn't it hasn't come out here yet i know, I know. it's come out overseas and globally, they're projecting 250 bajillion like, dollars. Bajillion yeah. dollars. But I'm super excited about it. There's a lot of buzz, a lot of positive buzz. Almost every outlet is like super, like this is amazing. Everyone should see this. Uh, it's it's got the, the apparently the Paul Walker thing is handled really well. Um, they're, they're, like there's tons of info about this. There's going to be uh, this is the beginning of a new trilogy for Fast and the Furious. Uh, what uh, Vin Diesel's like? This is going to be this is going to win Best Picture at the Oscars. Yeah, we were. Talking, I'm very excited about this. We were talking about this on Tuesday for new releases, and I just like I think you're absolutely right in that you said you're like when you go see a movie like this, like you know exactly what you're getting. Mm -hmm. You know exactly what you're going to go see. Fast cars. And if you want to have fun, I oh love my that god, he breaks, he breaks off his <laughs> cast with his muscles. With his rage, I he love that he's on the rock. He there's breaks Kurt off Russell's cast. in it. He jumps a car. From one, and look, there was a minigun, and you jumped a car Dubai, from one building to I mean, the it next. Just, oh boy, it just looks so fun and outrageous and and fun. Like I, there's no, I, for me, it's just I see these trailers, I'm like, that just looks like fun. Yeah, I and I, anytime I mention it on on Twitter, people are like, it's amazing, you're gonna love it. So I had I, friends who went and saw a press screening, and I'm it. so jealous. Yeah. So jealous Jerks. of you. Um, what are you into? So I'm into the rainy pot. There it is. Okay. Okay. So the rainy pot is, well, we have our lower third right now, but I'll, I'll lift it up. Okay. So the rainy pot is a little planter that you hang on your wall. I got it for my birthday from my dear friend, Mike. Um, he's been on the show before. You guys might remember back in like August. Uh, so what you do is you plant a little plant in here and you get seeds. It comes with seeds and, uh, or you can plant whatever you want. And then um, there's a little sponge inside this cloud. And I was so, gonna say, is there a video? There yeah, we go. have a video of it. And so you can see when it's so cute, when you pour the water in there, it looks like it's raining onto the plant because it like it spreads out the water so it doesn't look like one constant stream. It oh, just like trickles cute. down into it. It looks like it's raining right onto your little plant. It's super cute and you can hang it on. It's basically you mount it on your wall and then you have a little little planter there. Does it evenly distribute it over time or is it just like here here's the No, the here's sponge the, water for the, the sponge day. holds quite a bit of water in there. Like I would imagine if you don't want to just be like on it all the time like being like adding water to it, but the sponge like will evenly distribute that water over a period of time like after you pour it in. So oh, Okay. It'll, it'll dry out, obviously, but yeah, you'd probably water it once, and then over time it will, like, you know, trickle down into your little, That's adorable. little pot of stuff. Yeah. This was a birthday gift? Yes, this was a birthday Aww. gift, and I'm excited. I, ha I didn't mount it on my wall cause, yet because I wanted to bring it into the show. These are the seeds that they send. I don't know what they are because the box was uh, not clear on that, so maybe it's like... Uh, I don't know. Maybe this it's like cute. blueberries or something. It's I don't have no idea. Yeah, it's super adorable. I just it reminds me of Mario. It's like all green, uh, red, and white. Maybe it's a piranha plant. Beep, beep, beep. That's exactly what it is. Oh my god! Now I have to go plant it immediately because I'm excited to grow my own piranha plant. Yeah. But that's, that's what I'm into. Shoot fire out. It's called Rainy Pot, and you can find Ooh. them all over. They're they're how on much, the internet. How much is it? Uh, I didn't want to look it up because I felt weird about looking up a gift from a friend. The price oh, okay. of it. I thought so I, it's I felt kind of weird about it. It's from a friend. It is. It's priceless to me. So, but if you want, I, I can't imagine it would be terribly expensive. Um, it's not made of gold or anything. <laughs> not this one. I mean, not that we know of. The okay. piranha plant seeds, though, they might cost you extra. I'm not really sure. Uh, okay. So that being said, we have to talk about April Fools and your user feedback. So let's uh, let's get into that. So we asked everybody on Tuesday to use the hashtag TDFooled and tell us like what their favorite April Fool's joke was. And I think we weren't exactly clear, like we didn't we clarify, which we never are, uh, that 
this year's Abram Fool's Day. Like maybe just like keep an eye on everything and then like tell us. But a lot of people send in stuff that was like from years ago. Like well, I appreciate Fool's that though. So I like, but there were some stuff I'd never heard of. So for example, we had uh, Matthew Matlock write in and say, uh, Google knows from one or two years ago, which is funny because I like I kind I vaguely remember this, and that was a really weird thing. We have a little bit of video of that. Like Everybody it, likes the Google ones. Though, Everybody right? really likes the Google ones, and Google also did the Google. Like, so we'll talk a little bit right now about some of our favorites that we saw. I mean, the ones that I saw that I really liked were PlayStation Flow, where you had the goggles, and then it said like, okay, so you're in a game and you jump into the water, and then what you do is you put on your PlayStation Flow goggles. And you go dive in the pool and then you can control your character like inside a pool. It was really Whoa, dumb. Oh, that's weird. It's super dumb, that's but it made me laugh. Name. It was really weird. And then Google.com turned into com.google and everything was backwards for the day. That was annoying, actually. It's a little bit annoying. And then um, the last one that I really liked was uh, at the National Air and Space Museum. They put, they put out this video saying, now on display, Wonder Woman's invisible jet. And there's a guy on a lift like a mime pretending to clean the jet and it's like the funniest thing ever like it's amazing. there we go it's the extra <laughs> mile that makes the difference it totally it really is, is. that's it's fantastic. amazing they put out a whole news post about it they were like talking about here's one of the quotes on their blog the museum of flight had acquired the plane with help from lieutenant diana prince in april 2013 since then our curator bob vanderlinden wanted very very much to display the plane at the museum in washington dc and they talk about like the stealth capabilities of the plane and like all this stuff i just nice. thought that was so clever very well done. and funny and so perfect so Especially for a museum to step up and make a joke yeah like, like and it's it's just a really great kind of you know it's a nod to all of us in geekdom but then also it's it just so like sweet and clever it wasn't like lame like i thought it was a really clever april fool's day joke it's it good. actually almost made me not not like april fool's day it made me actually enjoy it a little that's bit a that's a feat that is a feat indeed um so that is our that is our user feedback generally do was there anything that you were particularly blown away by i don't i don't go out of my way to see all that stuff i'm yeah. sorry i just I'll, I'll find out about all of it tomorrow or yes. whenever it all unfolds. You'll go read some roundup posts. Yeah, I'll it's figure I'll figure it out. I think we have I don't like to be played the fool. <laughs> we like to wait. play fools, yeah. not be played the fool. Already enough of a fool. Yeah, yeah exactly. I got that we got enough of that in our lives. All right, so it's time for our very last piece of user feedback, which is always our photographer of the day. I'd like to formally apologize to the person who sent in this picture because I'm about to completely mess up your name. I'm really sorry. Yeah. This is from Saya Keef. Saya Keef? That I'm sounds, gonna, sounds good. I'm guessing. Um, he took this on his one plus one. This picture is so nice. He says, hi, I'm Saya Keef Akmal and here's a picture of my Hyundai on a desert in Colorado taken by my one plus one during my spring break at the Great Sand Dunes. Love the show. Keep up the good work, guys. Regards. Uh, this is ridiculous. Looks like an he ad in a magazine. Took this out of a magazine. Yeah, you ripped it out and took a picture of it. Let's all just admit it, Saikif. We know your games. We know your trickery. OP just copied and pasted. This is a copy pasta. But this is amazing. What Super kind of phone did he use? One plus one, which is the first time we've had that featured on the show. Oh. Pretty good. Pretty nicely good. Done. So when I so few people have the one plus one. It, was, it looks really good. Mm -hmm. Really good. It, make, it literally looks like an advertisement, which. Who do you work for? <laughs> because if you work for Hyundai, shame on you. Uh, but yeah, pretty cool. He says he's on spring break. He said he was on spring break, so I'm assuming he's in school he's in some way, shape, life, or form. Yeah. College, high school. Very cool. It's Nicely probably, done. It's Good. Probably, it's probably an eight-year-old kid who's just oh, much better at photography yeah. than we are. Got a great future ahead of him. Super good. Um, all right, so if you want to send in your photography to be featured on the show, you can email us tomorrow at CNET.com. You can also send us other stuff, story ideas, uh, your, just your random thoughts. We, we're, we're into it. Well, if you want advice, you can ask us questions um, about random stuff. That's cool. Uh, you can also find us on social media. We're on Snapchat, Tumblr. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. We're Tomorrow Daily on all those things, and we're Tomorrow Daily TV over on Google+. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to rate, nope, like, and favorite, and subscribe, and argue with us if you get the chance. We've yeah. been doing that. All it's those been things. Fun. We've been, no, we've been talking to some of the people online, so we've it's, it's been a lot of fun. Um, and also, if you're listening on the iTunes podcast, don't forget to rate and review, and also, if you use the Twitters, 
Don't forget to add us on there. I'm at Kale Anonymous. And I'm at Ashley Skella. And that's, uh, that's our show for the week, you guys. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back on Monday with a whole new docket of weird geek, science, fact, science fiction, everything all mashed together. Uh, but until then, be good humans. We'll see you next time. Bye.